as beautiful inside as she was out. And she deserves this beautiful day and all these wonderful people here. There were a lot of people who couldn't make it because of illness or distance, and we know that Linda is in their hearts today also. So our first speaker of the afternoon is Treadmill Sandra. She may explain why her name is Treadmill Sandra in her talk, but we're honored to have her here today. She was a friend of Linda's from the Department of Social Services. So Sandra, you're up. Okay, can you guys hear me? <laughs> is it really loud? Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sandra Jimenez, and kind of like Sharon said, I'm also known as Treadmill Sandra by Mr. Clintworth. He gave me that name a few years ago. Actually, a lot of years ago. Um, after his wife passed away, I inherited a treadmill. And I still have it in my, in my garage. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. But I just want to say that I'm really honored to be able to say a few words about my friend, Linda. And I'm going to do the work perspective because she was just such a lovely person. And um, I'm going to go on the perspective of our um, Department of Social Services. So you know how they say everyone enters your life for a reason? Well, I wholeheartedly believe that to be true. I have met some of the most amazing people. Each person has contributed to who I am today in some way, shape, or form. And for that, I am so grateful. Linda is one of those people that has positively influenced my life and the way I view the world. Linda will always hold a special place in my heart and is someone I will never forget. I was blessed to have met Linda over 10 years ago when she and I were colleagues who sat next to each, next to each other at social services. We began this incredible friendship that transcended over the years. My favorite memories of our friendship include us always laughing at work, playing jokes on people. We usually would um, crumble sticky notes and we would throw them at Celeste and Joellen all the time, um, usually every day just to make sure that they were awake. Um, sometimes it was paper clips, but I think my boss is here so he probably shouldn't know that. Um, we would roll our eyes, you know, we didn't approve of something, we'd make silly faces at one another. Mostly she would be sticking her tongue out at me. Um, we had nicknames for so many people. Um, Again, one of my favorites was when she would warn me that this little troll man was coming. And I'm probably not supposed to say this, but that later turned into a bad word, but not gonna say that. We would cry together after the loss of our loved ones, and we would have daily phone calls, especially when driving. Um, we really enjoyed time hanging out after work, just really enjoying our, you know, each other's company, going out to eat, having barbecues, drinking champagne, that was like her favorite. And she introduced me to cider, did not go well. But um, then we even um, incorporated tequila one time at her house, and that was a lot of fun. Actually, a few times. Uh, Linda worked at the Department of Social Services for 13 years. She started her career in um, June 28, 2008, as an employment resource specialist working eligibility programs. She was really passionate about working and helping the most vulnerable people in her community. Linda promoted to staff development on July 7th, 2013, and that's kind of when we all met her, and she became a program review specialist where she took on a new role in child welfare services. It's through child welfare services that she really found her wings and a passion and drive to support the department's vision. Linda thrived in her PRS position. Her first manager was Ben, who was not only her mentor but became her friend. He would push her professionally in identifying her career goals and encourage her to apply for promotional opportunities throughout the years. Ben has the same witty and sarcastic sense of humor as Linda, and he's actually here. I'm not going to point him out because I'm going to embarrass him. So you can see the connection. Linda always felt recognized and appreciated for all her hard work. Linda, being Linda, um, we would have what's called the management department, and then we have like staff development where all the program review specialists at. So she would remind us all the time how she had the best boss ever and she never understood why we didn't like our boss and how come they weren't as great as him. So she kind of bragged a lot. So we just had, when we'd have moments of jealousy, we would just harass her and say like, okay, teacher's pet, or we know you're Ben's favorite um, and our bosses suck and yours doesn't. And she would just like crack up because she knew it was totally true and she just loved it. She did gleam on that. Linda always demonstrated an incredible zest for life. She was intentional about her connections with others and was known as her colleagues to have an exceptional work ethic. She established what was called Donut Wednesday, where she would always bring donuts 
And she always made sure that people had their favorite donut. So she had um, a stick. She had sticky a sticky note in her desk where she wrote people's name and what donut they liked. So one day, someone made a comment about, "Hey, who's the one bringing donuts?" And I don't like it because I'm on a diet and yada yada. So Linda just smiled and never said a word. But after that moment, we noticed that she wrote her name on the box and she put a heart on it. I guess that was to tell that person that, you know, I'm the one who brought the donuts. So she would always have these sayings, hope springs eternal. I never knew what that meant, but she was, that was a phrase that she used quite regularly when coworkers were having a bad day. We were complete, um, if they were complaining or just being negative about something, Linda always um, would just kind of shout that out over the, over our cubicles, it was pretty funny. She was always teaching us a new phrase, she'd always give us some new words, she'd use words like cattywampus and some other ones. As many of you know, she was an avid reader, and she always loaned us a book, which we never returned, uh, mostly because she said she had plenty of them at home. And those books would always circulate throughout the department, and everybody would kind of, you know, enjoy reading them and just pass them along. Um, Ron built her the most beautiful bookcases for her home library. I remember telling her, gosh, that's huge. Like, how are you ever going to fill that? And she's like, I have plenty of books, and I have a ton of boxes, and I have some at home, some in my trunk, and some in my dad's house. And they were all her favorites. Linda loved to celebrate birthdays. Um, well, she liked to celebrate, but especially birthdays. She made, um, she made sure that everyone's um, desk. She would go to everybody's desk and she would actually sing happy birthday to them in person. Many times she would treat them to lunch or coffee just to celebrate. She was always so thoughtful and caring in that way and she always wanted to make, she always wanted to make sure that they felt special, especially on their birthday. Linda loved the holidays. Oh my gosh. So Halloween and Christmas were some of her favorites to celebrate. We dressed up as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one year and there was a contest and we won first place and it was pretty cool. Um, and then another year we were like superheroes and we gave each other like a superhero name So it was so you were gonna be like super something and so Joellen was like super pro because she was our newbie um, Diana Horn who's I don't think she's here today, but she was super nerdy and then of course Linda was super smart and then I was supposed to be super clean, but Again, this is uh, one of my friends who actually owns a print shop He made the t-shirts for us and he did a misprint on my shirt. So instead of OCD, it said OLD, so I was like super old all day long. <laughs> For someone who has OCD, it drove me crazy all day long. So, and it was in yellow, so she got like a yellow highlighter and tried to make that L turn into a C, but we couldn't help but laugh at how ridiculous my shirt looked, but I think it made her day because every time she looked at me, she would just bust up laughing. I was like, I'm never doing this again. But so then the next year, we decided to be some new age Disney princesses, so like because I had dark hair, I was gonna be Snow White, so I was just gonna wear like a white shirt and you know, something like, you know, Snow White-ish. Um, but we forgot, and so that year, I think only Celeste dressed up, so Linda, Joellen, and I conveniently forgot about that day. But Linda used to always say, we were there in spirit, Celeste, to support you. During the Christmas season, we would always take our lunches and do quick shopping sprees at different, um, like, stores. So one day we went to Kohl's, and she wanted to find some earrings for someone. And I remember she found like the cutest jewelry for this person. The next day she asked if I would go to her, to McDonald's to drop off the gift. So we went and um, there she, she um, we went to McDonald's and Linda gave an employee the jewelry that she had bought at Kohl's. And it was all wrapped up in a cute little box and everything. And then she told the young girl that she always thought that she was so sweet and friendly at the counter. And so she wanted to give her something special for Christmas and just really brighten her day. The young girl teared up and gave Linda this really big hug and said that no customer has ever done such a sweet gesture and that perhaps that was going to be her only gift that year. This really illustrates how intentional Linda was about people always thinking of others and wanting to brighten her day. We'd always leave the office for coffee runs, um, getting our steps in around the neighborhood, walking, getting some fresh air, or sometimes doing a quick grocery run to Trader Joe's because we needed to cook dinner. If Linda drove, she would always have to drop us off in front of the store because she'd park a mile away. And um, so one day we were talking about cars and trunks and how scary it would be if we ever got kidnapped and placed in a trunk because that would totally happen. And so um, I think it was Lin Celeste who was driving that day. She was driving Celeste, um, Celeste Joellen, and I, and Linda. So uh, Linda thought that it'd be good to figure this out. So she asked, you know, to inspect Celeste's trunk. 
So she opened the trunk and looked at the emergency trunk release and somehow we were able to convince her to get in the trunk and actually test it. So we closed the trunk and a few seconds she was out. She mentioned that the glow in the dark was not as bright and that maybe Ford needed to fix that. But of, nonetheless, she was out and the release lever did work and we made sure that Celeste was gonna be safe. Um, one day our friend Sarah mentioned that she wanted to find a dog to adopt. So Linda made it her mission to find her a dog. She would take pictures, she would send her links. We even took a trip to animal services to find Sarah a dog. Linda found um, many dogs for other people who weren't actually asking for dogs, but she made sure that they had a link to that. Um, eventually, Sarah found a beautiful dog, and of course, she asked for our input to name her, and we all voted on the name Lucy. Plus, it kind of goes with the name of my dogs, which are Leo and Lily. So Linda's drive and determination just was part of you know everything that she did. Um, her kitty relocation program at the ranch, she also found a lot of homes for those kittens and she made sure that her dad didn't have to have so many kittens at home. Many employees at the department really considered Linda to be their friend, a mentor, and even a mother figure. She was an inspiration to all that knew her and she was such a light in this world. Her smile and infectious laugh was unforgettable to those who knew her. Linda lived her life to the fullest. She had a strong and fierce love for her family. We had so many conversations about how proud she was of her family's accomplishments, her daughter-in-laws, her brother, her sisters, her dad, every life in general. Even though I just met her siblings a few months ago, I felt like I have known them for ages. So to Linda's family, I want to say thank you for allowing us to continue a friendship with you and you have been so inviting and many of us feel like we are part of your family too. We shared a beautiful person and all her stories, and we hope to continue to make more with you. To Linda, goodbye, my friend. I know we had a, a great ride together, but our time together through all the years will somehow take away the tears. Your smile always warmed my heart. Your laugh was music to my ears, and I hope to get wings so I can. So I hope you get wings so you can fly all over us and watch us. Thank you. <laughs>